Hey, welcome back. I'm Steve with Plug and Play EV, and uh, happy to be here with Matt Lamontagne from Leo and Sons. Uh, we're obviously in the uh, workshop here with uh, some Tesla work ready to happen. So we're going to walk through uh, what Leo and Sons do and some of the uh, work they can do on Tesla's. Hey, Matt. Oh, yeah, this is a 2013 Model S that came in with uh, an intermittent um, loss of power or loss of ready where the vehicle actually dies while driving. Um, so working on Teslas, when we compare them to some of the legacy models, you know, the Toyotas, the Lexuses, you know, the, the hybrids that we've been working on for years, um, they're much more different. The way we interface them with the scan tool, the way we, you know, uh, get data out of them is just so much so different than you know all the other manufacturers that we've been working on for years so we got to kind of get creative so you know during this diagnostic process the next step for us was to remove the battery and perform a you know visual inspection on certain things so that's where we're at on this one gotcha and what kind of uh, software tools are you plugging into are they third party things that you've pulled out yourself anything from tesla yeah so we actually use tesla software uh, toolbox 3 which is all kind of a cloud based with a special cable right into the uh, right into the vehicle and there are some aftermarket tools that we, we utilize. You know, again, to the point of Tesla kind of just being different than everybody else, um, you know, we, we, we need to kind of pull from those other tools and, and kind of bring them all together to try to get, you know, a repair plan or a diagnostic plan. Um, in place. So. And you said this was from 2013, and obviously we've got almost a decade now of uh, history, well, more than a decade yeah. uh, of the Teslas. Um, do you see, a, is there a difference in working on them over the years from that software side, or is everything just you plug it in, you get the, the data out you need, and then you start the visual inspection? Yeah, a lot of it, it's, it's very important to have that Tesla toolbox software, because we can then put the vehicle into what we call service mode plus, and then that opens up even more uh, data, even more test procedures that we can go to. And even in the center screen, the main um, screen of the vehicle on even the Model 3s and the later model stuff, that opens up even more data, even more, um, you know, information that's going to help us fix the cars. So. And what, what are the common kind of things that you're looking for before we go into the uh, the pack and start getting visually up close? What, what do you look for on that first pass with the software? Well, there's a lot of kind of self-tests that you can do right in there. So making sure we pass through all those and everything. It's going to kind of depend on what the vehicle's in for and what kind of issue. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, running through, you know, it's like low-hanging fruit. You know, the stuff that we can kind of check with just the push of a button, mm -hmm. let the car do some of it for us, and then use our experience, use our knowledge, just in general high voltage and EV work to, you know, then dive into the more advanced type stuff like this. So. Okay, so obviously we have a Tesla here, but uh, we've done videos in the past on the Nissan Leaf battery replacement. You have uh, hybrids, wide range of EVs. You drive a Mustang Mach-E yourself, yep. so you have a good history there. Can you tell us kind of a general uh, feel for what what you're working on, the kind of services you're performing, that kind of thing? Yeah, so anything high voltage, right? Anything we start talking about, either a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or EV, that's our real specialty, that's our niche. You know, 15 years ago, we got really into heavy into the hybrids. That was Prius, still is Prius for us today. Ton of Prius work, you know, and that was a natural step into the EV world. And kind of the first um, model or first vehicle that we got really involved with was the Nissan Leaf. Kind of the old statesman of EVs, mm -hmm. right? 2011 being the first year. Um, and unfortunately, despite being awesome cars, a lot of them uh, suffered, you know, battery degradation. So we've done, over two dozen approaching 30 battery replacements or upgrades on Nissan Leaf. So that's been a great platform, been a great vehicle for us, and we can keep these old EVs on the road. So most of the Nissan Leaf customers we talk to, cars been great, brakes, tires, normal kind of cost of driving type stuff they've had to do throughout the ownership, it's the battery. So they don't mind spending the money to upgrade the battery because, you know, nine times out of 10, the vehicle is, you know, basically pretty good and you know fully functional otherwise so, mm -hmm. yeah. for sure what's your personal history with uh, EVs what you've driven hybrids all the way through to oh yeah so I still have my first hybrid a 2005 a gen 2 uh, Prius mm -hmm. that is now a loaner car here at the shop that right. we let customers use that's approaching 300,000 miles and has had you know experimental batteries put into it all these different mm -hmm. things um, but then um, I bought a 2013 Leaf uh, after that, you know, again, to kind of just cut my teeth on it, learn experience, learn how to fix these cars. And my wife drives a RAV4 uh, hybrid. Uh, but yeah, to your point, now my 
Uh, it's been two years I've had it. It's a 21, uh, the Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive with the you know extended range battery. Right. Yeah. So this is kind of reflecting that a lot of people you know want the people to work on their EVs, that design their charge networks, that do all this stuff to actually drive EVs. You've got a decade plus on your belt from the right. hybrids all the way through. Yeah. First yeah. early EV. If you've been a Nissan Leaf driver, that pretty much says it all, right? Yeah. That's the stamp of authority. Exactly. Yeah. Not only do we work on them, we drive them ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so we've established a little bit of uh, context and the, you've got the history, you've got the authority and the personal driving um, experience of uh, working on these things, but uh, we're here for Tesla today specifically. So let's take a look underneath the chassis here, the dropped battery and see what we're working on. Okay, so underneath the Tesla, what are we looking at? So you can see we've dropped the battery pack, which, you know, very, very heavy, easily 1,000, 1,200 pounds. Um, lots of nuts and bolts that go down the side. Picking it up properly is important. Um, but something that Tesla has kind of done, you can see we've capped them off, but it's still dripping. Um, they do what they call these wrap and make connections. So these are coolant connections here, and we've just shoved this, this rag up to keep it from stop dripping in these two plugs. But it is actually a quick connect straight to the battery for its thermal management system. Mm. Um, you know, probably due to the packaging and the design, but I think uh, Tesla also had some ambitions early on of actually hot swapping batteries or where they'd be swapping batteries quickly uh, mm -hmm. when they get uh, low on state of charge rather than you know charging, but yep. really not something that I, I think ever came to fruition. And then same back, back here on the uh, low voltage and high voltage connections. So you get your high voltage DC connections where the actual high voltage of the battery exits to these two pins on the, uh, the underside of the vehicle there. And then you have your low voltage connection with your communication wires and such here, you know, for the onboard computers and such for the battery that again are just a quick connect. So when raising and lowering the battery, it's very important that, you know, these um, connections, you know, all three of them are, are perfectly in line. So we take a lot of extra care when, when doing so, so that we don't, you know, bend a connector or terminal on the vehicle either. So. Mm -hmm. So the pack itself has kind of this thermal barrier on the top with a, with a fire blanket underneath for obvious safety. Yep. We're not going to get that, that far down on this particular pack. Um, this pack doesn't necessarily have a um, cell or, or voltage issue on the battery. It is one of the accessories um, or the contactors or the large relays that actually connect the battery to the rest of the system. So that's what's giving us a, an alert on this vehicle. So at this point, we did as much as we could non-intrusively. So, you know, through the scan tool, through the center screen, through, you know, um, not actually taking the vehicle apart. Mm -hmm. And now we're at the point where we're, we've dropped the pack in order to perform a visual inspection, which we obviously started with these connections, wanted to make sure that there was no corrosion or any uh, connection issue on the low voltage mm -hmm. side, uh, as well as the high voltage. So we're gonna be opening up this, this rear cover here and, you know, basically performing a visual inspection to uh, see if we see anything, mm -hmm. that will be the next step. How about the uh, the moving parts? Obviously, electric vehicles. You know, we we speak about having far fewer moving parts, but some things are still kind of unique to electric vehicles. Can we take a look at that under this Tesla? Absolutely. So in the back here, this is a rear wheel drive. You know, two wheel drive with a rear large rear drive unit in the back here. So something that's common. You know, basically everything outboard you're going to find on a traditional vehicle as well. You know, CV half shafts, brakes, uprights, control arms, all the suspension bits and such. Right. That's going to be you know, similar, not exactly the same, but very similar, uh, you know, to a traditional ICE vehicle. When we come inboard to the actual powertrain, you know, we're talking about obviously an electric motor. So these old large drive units are kind of deceiving. You'd almost say that there's two electric motors here, but actually one side is the motor, the other side is the inverter for it. So they actually make it in a round design for stability, for, you know, uh, evenness and sim uh, symmetry down the center line. Uh, but it is only a single rear motor with its, its paired inverter right on the side of it. Liquid cooled, we have coolant going right through it, you can see, um, with the traditional um, differential setup uh, right back here. So just like a regular car, CV axles, it's got its shock back here. This vehicle happens to have air ride, so we can see kind of a um, level sensor for that, so to keep the the airbags uh, and the proper, you know, evenness on all four corners. It's got a traditional sway bar, just like a 
another car, you know, being a higher end vehicle, being what it is, you know, we're seeing much more aluminum, you mm -hmm. know, that's for weight savings and, and such. But um, yeah, really, you know, suspension wise, not much different than, you know, a, a typical ICE vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we had taken a panel down here. So there is an aero type panel, plastic yeah. panel for aerodynamics that's been removed. But yeah, I mean, we have, you know, much less oil and grease and, and such than uh, than a traditional vehicle. So we mm -hmm. don't, we don't, we still get dirty, right? We can, yeah, uh, <laughs> unavoidable. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just so. driving on roads yeah. type, of, type of thing, so. So this is a two-wheel drive model, so no no front motor, no front drive unit uh, in this one. So we get a little bit more view of kind of what's going on. You know, this plastic tub here is actually part of the frunk. Right. So these two-wheel drive actually have a very large uh, storage area up front. But under here we can see actually the heater unit, which is a high voltage unit uh, for the battery. So this actually heats the liquid coolant that runs through the battery, again, for optimal temperature, right, for efficiency. With the normal ICE car, it's got its its steering shaft coming down to a rack. What's kind of interesting on these early Model S's is that the steering rack or the steering gear, the rack and pinion, is actually off a um, Land Rover or a Range Rover um, right-hand drive that's been flipped over. So rather than you know sourcing a you know a left-hand drive and using it you know traditionally, Tesla kind of got creative and, and took a right-hand drive and basically put it on. Put it on upside down. Uh, and how often, in terms of coolant, are we looking at a change? Does it vary across the models? Or yeah, they're all going to have service intervals, right? I, I'm usually in in my school of thought is to, you know, change them maybe a little prematurely, you know, um, before the actual mileage or, or date. You know, especially here in New England where we go through so many thermal cycles up and down, and you know, coolant has you know additives to it that break down over time too. So whereas the coolant, you know, the kind of the old school way is it, you know. Um, below freezing, does it, you know, have their proper temperature rating? You know, there's more to coolant nowadays than that. You know, you want to make sure that the additives that help with the rubbers and the seals and the gaskets of the system uh, are all there and in good shape as well. Brakes, obviously we talk about regenerative braking, saving uh, the wear and tear, but you still have the desire to use the uh, physical brakes or yep. know, and shake them off with the rust sometimes, right? What's yeah, the, uh, exactly. So you're, you're exactly right in that Maybe we'll go to the outside of the wheel here. Um, you know, the brakes are used much less because most of the braking is done regeneratively through the electric motor. Mm -hmm. But you can see here, I mean, we're starting to get a, a fair amount of a rust edge uh, right on the rotor. So yeah. that's why we always recommend to our customers coming in for an annual service mm -hmm. and the brakes being part of that, right? So we're, we're not necessarily replacing the pads and rotors, but we might send them out to be machined. We might, we'll definitely be lubricating the, the pads to make sure that, that things don't get stuck. But yeah, absolutely, especially here in New England or anywhere that rust is prevalent, you know, getting in every year, lubricating those brakes, checking those brakes um, is very important. But easily could get 100,000 miles out of a set of pads. It's usually the rust that gets them first rather than wear. So now to kind of continue with the diagnosis and the checking of this vehicle, we've taken the time to remove all these bolts of this rear cover here. That's going to expose the contactor assembly um, as well as the control module. So not only was it bolted shut, it was also liquid sealed. You can see we had to kind of pry open and, and cut that seal. But now with my high voltage gloves on, you know, I'll take this off to kind of just show you know, what we're talking, what we're dealing with under here. So again, this is where our low voltage came in, right? Mm -hmm. Our control model, module, you can see the, uh, the circuit board here. And then obviously everything orange over here is high voltage. This is the DC that, um, that actually comes directly from the modules and cells of the battery to this assembly. So underneath these covers are what we call contactors or high voltage relays. And those are what actually click and connect the battery to the rest of the system. So this is where we're going to be going next um, once we get, get a little further. To, uh, to diagnose and kind of see if there's anything going on with those. Because this is where the area that the vehicle is, when it goes into a fault state, is indicating, you know, there's an issue, so. Okay, so super enlightening and really appreciate the, uh, the tour of uh, what you do and uh, how you can work with Tesla owners. So uh, folks, if uh, you have any kind of uh, Tesla needs or hybrid EV needs, uh, this is the place to be. So come on down, we'll leave contact details below here so that you can contact Matt and get into Leo and Sons. Thanks very much, Matt. Appreciate Thanks for coming. It.